It might make Prince Harry profoundly uncomfortable, but one of Meghan Markle's on-screen love interests had plenty to say about their steamier moments. And that's not the only former co-star who's revealed their true thoughts. Wizards of Waverly Place star Greg Salkin got to know Meghan Markle when they appeared together in the 2015 crime drama Antisocial. He played a street artist who gets involved in his brother's criminal schemes, while she played his girlfriend, a glamorous model who is no fan of her beau's shady bro. During a 2019 appearance on Fair Game with Kristen Leahy, the British Salkin shared his excitement that his American co-star had secured a spot in his country's history books. As he put it, everybody does know her as a princess, but in real life, she genuinely is also like a princess. And in a 2019 interview with Access Hollywood, Salkin declared, if there's one person I would want to represent our country, it would be her. And back in 2016, he gushed to Vanity Fair. Out of all the actresses I've worked with in 12 years, I think she's my favorite. While filming the 2016 Hallmark movie, Dater's Handbook, Meghan Markle received some sage advice from her on-screen love interest, as Christopher Palaha revealed to She Knows in 2022. She was dating a guy in Toronto and she wasn't really into the dude. And I was like, you just got out of a marriage to Trevor Ingleson. Why are you jumping into another relationship? Go be single, be free. And Markle did exactly that. So after, she just so happened to attract the attention of Prince Harry once she was unattached. She later texted Palaha to let him know that she'd met someone special. During a 2021 appearance on The Sarah Scoop Show, Palaha weighed in on her and Harry's decision to step down as senior royals and forge their own path. I'm 100% on Meghan's side. I think she's whip smart, a lot of um, amazing potential to do a lot of good in the world. Palaha also said that he'd love to team up with Markle again, and there's definitely some potential for a collaboration. He writes romance novels, and she told Variety in 2022 that she and Harry are interested in producing rom-coms. Wendell Pierce played Meghan Markle's father on Suits, and he has fond memories of working alongside her. During a 2018 appearance on Harry Connick Jr.'s talk show, Pierce revealed that she used to speak about her royal beau in code to keep their relationship on the down low. Your life is gonna change, but always know, no matter where you are, I will always be your loving fake father. Then, in a 2021 interview with the UK radio station LBC, Pierce addressed the topic of Meghan and Harry stepping away from their royal duties. As he put it, it is quite insensitive and offensive that we are all complicit in this sort of palace, gossip. In the midst of so much death, I think it is insignificant. When the Daily Mail started twisting what he said as criticism directed towards Markle, Pierce responded by tweeting, I never was interviewed by the Daily Mail, and their story manipulated my words in a radio interview. As I told Meghan, I support her and wish her all the best. In 2005, Meghan Markle and Simon Rex both appeared on the UPN sitcom Cuts, and then multiple tabloids wanted to cast the two of them as love interests in real life. In a 2022 interview with The Guardian, Rex revealed that he'd been offered $70,000 to lie about having a sexual relationship with Markle. As he admitted, I was broke as f I really needed the money, but I'll be on food stamps before I do that. Rex alerted Markle about the slimy offer, and to thank him for refusing to play the tabloid's dirty game, she wrote him a letter that said, It's nice to know there are still good people. The note was so meaningful to Rex that he had it framed. Markle once told Good Housekeeping that she had a side hustle as a calligrapher, so we're sure the letter was worthy of that frame. It's so funny that we live in a time where everyone's like, it's such a big deal. I just did the right thing, right. you know? Right. In a 2018 interview with Entertainment Tonight, Abigail Spencer revealed that she and Meghan Markle are more than just close friends. They also have the exact same birthday. The two of them appeared on Suits together, but they actually first connected when they were auditioning for a different project years earlier. As Spencer recalled, she was just so stunning and there was just something about her. After The Times published its 2021 report about the bullying accusations a palace advisor made against Markle, Spencer defended her friend in a lengthy Instagram post. When they reconnected after not seeing each other for a while, Markle integrated herself into Spencer's new group of friends, who were instantly charmed by her warmth and attentiveness. Spencer also revealed, She's been there for me, and physically held me, in my darkest hours. After my dad died, after a gut-wrenching breakup, she brought me into her home and nursed me back to health. Spencer also appeared on the Netflix docuseries Harry and Meghan, as she reminisced about the time that Markle informed her that she was dating Prince Harry, which happened at Bergdorf Goodman as they sipped on champagne. It was very clear and from the moment that she told me about him that they were in love and that they were going to go to the ends of the earth to be together. When Meghan Markle showed up in the 2013 rom-com Random Encounters, she didn't play the romantic lead. That part instead went to Abby Wathen, while Markle played Wathen's roommate and party girl pal. The two actresses also had an off-screen friendship that was strengthened by their parallel relationship timelines. 
As Wathen recalled in the 2017 ITV documentary, Prince Harry and Meghan, truly, madly, deeply, Meghan and I bonded because I was married and she was getting married. I was invited to her wedding, but I couldn't go. The wedding that Wathen missed happened in 2011, when Markle and producer Trevor Ingleson tied the knot in Jamaica. They divorced two years later, and Wathen's marriage ended around the same time as well. As Wathen recalled, we bonded on that too. I was destroyed, but she was empowered. She took her power back. It wasn't the right relationship for her, so she moved on. While Random Encounters wasn't exactly a big hit, Markle did manage to land her starring role on Suit soon after. I think she always kind of knew that she would be successful. Like, that's the kind of person that she is. Working royals aren't that different from actors, as they have to constantly perform for the cameras. So it pays to look affable even when you don't feel like smiling and making small talk. But as an actual actor, Meghan Markle didn't just have to smile and look engaged during public engagements. She also had to be believably vicious, seductive, and vulnerable. For her role as a photographer in the 2012 movie Dysfunctional Friends, Markle had to be domineering while directing a male model played by Christian Keyes. When he dared to question her character's artistic vision, she delivered the line, That's why you're not paid to think. Markle also had to slap Keys at one point, and as he recalled to People magazine in 2018, Megan said, I might improv an extra smack, and I was like, smack away. I knew she was going to put a little hand on it. She had some torque and rotation in the wrist. When she wasn't smacking him around on set, Markle was a pleasure to be around. As Keys put it, she was super cool and approachable. She was a class act. From 2006 to 2007, Meghan Markle appeared on the game show Deal or No Deal as one of the models who stood smiling on stage next to a briefcase. But she didn't exactly find this job to be very fulfilling. As she admitted on her Archetypes podcast in 2022, I was thankful for the job, but not for how it made me feel, which was not smart. She also mentioned that she didn't want to be valued just for her appearance. Deal or No Deal host Howie Mandel has admitted that he has no memory of Markle from their time working together. However, he has spoken out in support of her after her comments about the show were criticized. As he told Us Weekly in 2022, I don't think Megan is complaining. I think Megan just said she wanted to do more. I get it because they had this pyramid of 26 beautiful, intelligent women standing there just staring at me like I was a piece of meat. I was in the center, just dressed up in a suit, and I felt like I am more than this. And they would just look at me and I had to do nothing. From Howie to Harry. Harry, Howie. Howie, Harry. In his memoir, Spare, Prince Harry confesses that seeing some of his wife's love scenes in suits made him rather uncomfortable. As he put it, it would take electric shock therapy to get those images out of my head. Of course, that's often part of the job for an actor, and that wasn't the only time that Markle had to fake intimacy with a co-star. The steamy scenes that she filmed as an ex-stripper didn't help the 2008 pilot for The Apostles get picked up by a network, but they did give her on-screen husband something to talk about when she married Harry. In a 2018 interview with BBC Radio 5, Keith Robinson said that Harry is a fortunate man to be married to Markle. He also praised Markle's work ethic and attitude, as well as her appearance. She's a very beautiful woman, so it's not, it's not hard to kiss a beautiful woman, so uh, I'm glad they casted a beautiful woman to play my wife, so it was nice, obviously, fellas. Filming love scenes can be awkward, but Robinson thought that he and Markle vibed as co-stars. As he revealed, she was very into it, very giving. It wasn't a hard sell for me at all. We had some pretty intense scenes. After Meghan Markle found her prince, her Suits co-star Patrick J. Adams assumed the role of her white knight. When she was accused of bullying palace staffers, he defended her in a series of since-deleted tweets. As he put it, It sickened me to read the endless racist, slanderous, clickbaiting vitriol spewed in her direction from all manner of media. Adams also criticized Buckingham Palace for announcing that it would be investigating the bullying allegations, arguing that it was Markle who was a victim in this situation. As he put it, this newest chapter and its timing is just another stunning example of the shamelessness of an institution that has outlived its relevance, its way overdrawn on credibility, and apparently bankrupt of decency. In 2020, Adams told Radio Times that he hadn't called Markle since she married into the royal family. As he confessed, quite frankly, I think I'm intimidated. I don't know what I would say. But if he can ever muster up the courage to break the ice with someone he worked with for seven years, he'd happily do so again. In 2022, Adams told Extra that he's totally up for collaborating with Markle on one of her Netflix projects. Amanda Schull is another one of Markle's Suits co-stars who's been interviewed regarding her thoughts about the Duchess. In 2018, she told New Idea, I don't know Harry personally, but he's a very lucky man to have Meghan in his life because I can only say wonderful things about her. But back when Schull joined the cast of Suits, she was the one impressing Markle. In the 2000 movie Center Stage, Schull played an aspiring ballerina trying to achieve her dream of joining the fictional American ballet company. 
It's easy to see why someone as driven and ambitious as Markle would find this movie so appealing. As Shaw recalled to Us Weekly in 2018, a fun little tidbit with Megan, she was a Center Stage fan, so she would ask me lots of questions about Center Stage, which is really sweet. Markle eventually became more than an excited fangirl in Shaw's eyes, as she earned the respect and admiration of an actor she held in such high esteem. As Shaw put it, every single time I worked with Megan, she was so prepared and so focused with her work on camera. She was just always such an open, lovely, generous person from the very first day I met her. Meghan Markle's Suits castmates weren't bitter when she bid them farewell to embark on her new royal life. Some of them even scored invites to her wedding in May 2018. Before the ceremony, Sarah Rafferty spoke to Today about the cast's close bonds. We were with each other for longer than we went to college yeah. or high school yeah. with our friends. Yeah, so we became family in a way. We're, we're still family. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is a wonderful family. And Rick Hoffman shared a rather heartwarming story. The end of a relationship had left him dateless for a destination wedding in Paris, so Markle offered to be his plus one, and they ended up having an absolute blast together. As for Eric Roberts, he came out in Markle's defense after she was accused of bullying members of her palace staff. She's not a bully, in my experience, at all. She could not have been more gracious. D.B. Woodside also found the allegations impossible to believe, as he insisted to Entertainment Tonight. Megan is one of the sweetest, nicest, most intelligent, thoughtful human beings that I have ever met in my life. The thing about her is she's strong and she's resilient. And if they think that this kind of stuff is going to knock her off her game for very long, they picked the wrong woman to mess with. In the 2011 comedy Horrible Bosses, Meghan Markle plays a FedEx driver who catches the eye of Jason Sudeikis' character Kurt. He tells her that she's too attractive to be delivering boxes and asks her if she's really filming a prank show. Alas, this cringe-worthy attempt at flattery fails to impress. In a 2018 interview with Entertainment Tonight, Sudeikis quipped that all it took was filming that scene to convince him that Markle would someday trade her FedEx cap for a crown. As he put it, she was regal in that moment, and it seemed like she's only gotten better at it. It was great. She was very sweet. By 2020, Meghan Markle's star power had increased exponentially. It was so strong, in fact, that it powered the resurrection of a Comedy Central project that had been gathering dust for nearly a decade. It was called The Boys and Girls Guide to Getting Down, and her castmates included New Girls Max Greenfield and Happy Ending star Adam Pally. As Pally recalled to Access Hollywood, she was very sweet and talented. I think it was disappointing for her when she showed up and found out that I was her love interest and not the other male lead, Max Greenfield. I mean, that is kind of a bummer. If Meghan Markle began acting again today, it's safe to assume that most of her co-stars wouldn't forget their experiences with her. But before her name was in the headlines on a daily basis, she didn't exactly leave a lasting impression on everybody that she worked with. When Us Weekly asked Emmanuel Shrieky about the 2006 thriller that she and Markle were in together called Deceit, Shrieky responded, She was in that? I didn't even know that. That is amazing. I had no idea. Mind blown right now. I don't remember that at all. That's hilarious. Nathan Fillion, on the other hand, remembered working with Markle, though he couldn't recall all the details. When Entertainment Tonight asked him about her role in an episode of Castle as a serial killer who wore a Sleeping Beauty costume and dressed her victims up like fairy tale characters, he confessed, I forgot that she was the murderer and I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Then there's comedian Russell Brand, who claimed that he snogged Markle in 2010's Get Him to the Greek. But on a 2018 episode of the British talk show Loose Women, he admitted that he doesn't actually remember the supposed kiss, though he does believe that the footage exists. I only know this because I think I saw a, a clip of it somewhere. Yeah. Despite Brand's recollections, it's worth noting that no such scene actually appears in the final cut of the film. Meghan Markle had a small role as a bartender in the 2010 drama Remember Me, and the star of that film, Robert Pattinson, still remembered her many years later. In the scene, she makes Pattinson's character smirk when she denies his friend a drink, much to his bewilderment. When E! News asked Pattinson to comment on Prince Harry and Markle's engagement in 2017, he said, Yeah, she seems great. I work with her as well, so like, well, she didn't remember me. It's my claim to fame. And when Pattinson was asked if he believed that his history with Markle would score him a wedding invite, he laughingly replied, Hopefully, Pattinson ultimately didn't attend the wedding, but the snub should hardly be interpreted to mean that Markle didn't enjoy working with him. Quite the contrary, in fact, as she gushed to her world back in 2013. Oh, he's such a sweetheart. He's a really lovely guy and a really great example to be able to watch someone who is young, whose stardom has really taken over his life in such a huge way, and yet he's still gracious, humble, and cool. I think that is really endearing. Interestingly enough, Pattinson has another royal connection to Markle, as he was reportedly once considered for the role of Harry in a biopic called The Spare. 